Good afternoon, Homes Rock Church of Christ. I hope you're having a great Wednesday and hope everything's going well for you. It's kind of funny lately as I've been calling some people and talking to them and the inevitable response when I say, how you doing? They'll say, I'm surviving. <laughs> that's, about all the, that's about all they want to say, I'm surviving. And that response, it got me my memory to thinking back. And one time, a long time ago, I was attending a preacher's meeting. It was a long time ago back in California. The guy who was running the meeting, he had all of us uh, ministers break up into small groups of about four or five people. And he asked us to make a list. And on this list, we were supposed to pretend that we were going to be stranded on this desert island with nothing on it. And we could only bring with us about six items. He asked us to write down what those six items would be that we would bring with us on this deserted island. And then we had time to then we had to discuss with the small group and explain to them why we chose those six items. Now, some folks had some pretty weird items. I remember our little small group as we were going around sharing. They had some pretty weird items that were that they were going to bring to this deserted island with them in order to survive. My mind was all about survival when I did that little thing. I put the most basic of things down. Uh, others, they put things down like their Xbox or their pizza oven or, you know, crazy things like that. As I thought, well, you don't need those things to survive. It was an interesting exercise, but it was funny to listen to people's different answers. I remember one person said they'd bring a scrapbook with them. And I was like, really? I mean, scrapbooks are important. They're good for memories, but I got memories here. I don't need that to survive. I was thinking more of that kind of thing. And, and so it was interesting. It's always an interesting exercise to do those kinds of things because it makes you start to prioritize all your stuff and ask if it's really needed or not to survive. And uh, I, I remember some people, uh, the vast majority of those ministers, they they put on there they'd bring a Bible with them to that deserted island. And other ministers, they would they contradicted that. They said they, they didn't want to bring their Bible as one of their items because they had enough of the Bible stored up in their heart and in their mind that they would not need to bring a Bible in order to survive. They were they wanted things like electricity and uh, and shelter and food and the things that water purifier. These kinds of things are the things that a lot of people are thinking of. But I've seen a lot of those kinds of survival games and they usually have these outlandish settings in a wide variety of places. One we is a wilderness, a mountaintop. Uh, what, what if you're lost at sea or at an airplane crash? But the task is always the same. It boils down to making you prioritize your stuff. It is. It makes you make decisions on how to satisfy what you think is your basic needs. Science, if you look at the scientists, they say human life really only requires four things. Science has their own basic needs list of what they of what they say humans need to survive. And those four things that scientists say you need to survive is water, air, food, and light. Scientists say you have to have those four things and you can survive whatever the whatever. It is interesting to consider that what the scientists say and then also look at what Bible says. Both science and God agreed about those four things. Listen to what to God's perspective on this. Let's just take the first one, water. Our body needs water to function. Without it, we're going to die fairly quickly. You lack it and you start to get dehydrated and you get sick and ill. Some of you may have know, know what it's like to get dehydrated. Uh, Jesus says, I am going to offer living water. When, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 39. And so, so Jesus says, yes, water's needed and I am the water you need. Also, air. Look at the second one, air. Without oxygen, we cannot breathe, we'll suffocate, and we'll die. And we'll leave die much quicker without oxygen than we will even without water. And on the sixth day of creation, the, it says, uh, the Bible tells us that God formed man from dust in the ground and breathed life into mankind. 
Jesus is the breath of life. He's the oxygen we need to survive because all of life comes from God. When, when, he, when Jesus uh, was speaking in John chapter 20, verse 22, it says he breathed on them. And he, and he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit after he breathed on them. John chapter 20, verse 22. So Jesus says, I'm also the air that you need. Let's look at the third one, food. We need food to provide the energy to our bodies. We need nourishment. Food gives us the vitamins and minerals we need for health. The calories we need for energy. Without food, we're going to die. Maybe a little slower death than being without water or air, but still you're going to die without food if it is needed for survival. In the ancient times and in the times of the Bible, bread is such a basic food item needed for survival that it became the symbol of all food. In Exodus chapter 16 to verse 4, it says, God rained down bread from heaven to save a nation. The first of Jesus' I am statements says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. John 6, 35. Just as bread or food may satisfy our physical hunger cravings, Jesus too satisfies the longing in our hearts for joy and peace and happiness and all those other needs that we have in this life. He provides that. He is the food for us. And then that fourth one, light. Light is necessary for both plant and animal life. In Michigan, sometimes we lack some of the sunlight that most other states have. We, we have a lot of cloudy days and dark days. My doctor, several years ago, when I came to Michigan, she told me, welcome to Michigan because you need to have vitamin D supplements because you're getting, you're not getting enough sunlight in this state. Uh, and so your vitamin D levels are low. And so I've been on vitamin D for several years uh, because of a lack of sunlight. Light is necessary for vitamins that we need. It's also, we know it's necessary in order to, for plant and animal life too, uh, but it, it's needed in so many ways. And in the beginning, the first day of creation story, God said, let there be light. Jesus is the next step. In the second of the seven I am statements, Jesus tells us I am the light of the world. Light is defined as life as seen in John 1, 4. In him was life and the life was the light of men. Those who have faith through him will have eternal life. This life is a gift Jesus brought from God into a dying world. Those who walk in darkness do not have eternal life. There are other items that you might include on your survival ranking system or your survival list, but the scientists say all you need is four things. The creator of life says I'll provide all four of those things. I'll provide all essential elements. I'll give you water, air, food, and light. Not only to sustain you, but to enrich you. While we may take water, air, food, and light for granted on a day-to-day -day basis, many times we don't even, we kind of forget those things, but they, even though they're basic needs of life, we don't consider ourselves to be in a survival mode because we take those things for granted. But in reality, we are in a survival mode. We need to sustain this life to thrive in the next, eternal life. So I challenge you today to seek Jesus in this life. Seek him as the source of living water, the breath, the bread of life, and the light that illuminates our daily path as we walk towards him for all of eternity. That's my challenge to you this morning, and I hope it has been a uplifting to you and we'll see you soon home road take care